Uh, this is this is a really great occasion, and I really appreciate the opportunity, and very glad that you guys all came to this um, this presentation. Okay, I promise it's going to be useful to you. Um, the Internet Archive is excited about um, resource sharing. About a year and a half ago, we really kicked it off, and we're going, going, going. I even um, get to be on the nights and weekends crew, uh, so I do a bunch of fulfillments. Um, to try to keep it down to less than an hour, um, even through weekends, where we, we try, um, at least, at least I also uh, try. So, Interlibrary Loan is a library superpower. We're really happy to be working with you. Please turn it on. Um, and with that, I will uh, uh, pass to Chris Freeland, um, one of the lead librarians at the Internet Archive, um, to tell you more about the program. Chris. Thanks, Brewster. Uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, depending on where you are, everyone. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to, to talk with you uh, today about resource sharing, which is something that I am um, passionate about. Uh, a little bit about me uh, as we get started. So I am a librarian at the Internet Archive, as Brewster mentioned. Um, I've been with the Internet Archive for about five years now, um, which seems amazing. Um, before that, I was an associate university librarian at Washington University in St. Louis. And when I was in AUL, um, Access Services, which included interlibrary loan, was part of my portfolio. In addition to that, I was a student worker in my undergraduate library um, in, in college way back in the in the whole last century. Um, and I worked in interlibrary loan. One of the one of the jobs that I had. One summer was um, filling in while there was a uh, one of our interlibrary loan uh, library technical support assistance was on uh, medical leave. And so for the for one summer, this is the summer of 1994 or five, um, I spent the summer photocopying requests and faxing them or mailing them uh, to people through interlibrary loan. So um, I'm it's funny how um, all things come back to resource sharing in some ways. Um, so really glad to be able to, to to chat with you today about what the Internet Archive is doing in the uh, resource sharing space. So maybe a little background might be uh, helpful um, if, for those of you who, who may not be as familiar with the Internet Archive. The Internet Archive is a, a nonprofit library. Uh, what you're seeing, seeing here is our physical headquarters in San Francisco, which is both a library as well as a community space. Um, now that we're back open and doing in-person events, we're having uh, uh, bringing people into the space, um, having book talks, doing all kinds of things, uh, you know, the kinds of things you do with your library space. Now, the Internet Archive was founded uh, by Brewster in 1996. Uh, we just celebrated our 25th anniversary last fall. And our mission is to provide universal access to all knowledge. Um, you know, we started our collection by archiving websites like this gem here that you're seeing, which is the homepage at apple.com from uh, July 15th of 1997. Now, you know, that's probably what we're best known for, the Wayback Machine, which is, you know, an archive of more than uh, showing here 642 billion, the number's now uh, 700 billion web pages, again, that dates back to, uh, to our founding in 1996. But the Internet Archive is a lot more than the Wayback Machine. Um, and you can find through our website at archive.org. You can access all the, all the materials that we have archived, uh, preserved, and made available for, uh, for patrons, including news programs, movies, sound recordings, and books. All of those things are available for free, um, including the materials that the, the Internet Archive has acquired and digitized. So we have more than 3 million monographs and 14,000 periodical titles that we own in physical form and that we've digitized you know, from either the microfilm, microfiche, or the book itself, um, like you're seeing here. Um, so this is um, Lon Zhu, who is a scanner in our uh, San Francisco Scanning Center. And Lon uh, is using the, um, uh, the, the tabletop scribe that we, the, the, the scribe machine that we developed for book scanning. Um, what's important for you to know is that we first scan all of our materials for users with print disabilities. And then we make them available to cited patrons for open download if the material is in the public domain or via controlled digital lending. 
Now, as Brewster mentioned, we started um, doing some pilots last year around resource sharing. And one of the things that we did was join the Boston Library Consortium. So the Internet Archive has a long standing relationship and successful relationship with the Boston Library Consortium or the BLC. Um, in fact, the what is now known as controlled digital lending got its start with libraries from the Boston Library Consortium, both the consortium as a whole and individual libraries within. Um, and so when we were having conversations um, with Charlie Barlow, who's the executive director of the Boston Library Consortium, and talking about how the Internet Archive could fit into resource sharing networks, he wanted to make sure that the Boston Library Consortium was one of the first places where we um, started evaluating how resource sharing would work for us. So we joined the Boston Library Consortium. We are a member library, um, and uh, uh, it's been a uh, it's been great being part of that membership and then um, expanding our uh, resource sharing networks uh, out. So I mentioned uh, we started, uh, and Brewster mentioned as well, uh, last year starting some pilots. And so in February of last year, we started with uh, a pilot with RAPID. Um, and what you can see here in the slides is that we're putting different uh, amounts of, uh, of our materials in, and that's based on each one of the service providers that we're partnering with. So for RAPID, we have our books and uh, a selection of our periodicals. For uh, and then in May of last year, we started a pilot with IDS project, um, which is a, a plug into Iliad. Uh, there's more than 100 libraries that are participating there. Uh, and as you can see, that's uh, 4 million books and um, all of the periodicals that the Internet Archive has. Then in January of this year, we did a pilot of a free, uh, the, the free Iliad plugin. Again, books and periodicals uh, made available there. And then in April, uh, we started a pilot with uh, OCLC, uh, OCLC's WorldShare, ILL, and Tapasa. Um, and what we're putting uh, into that resource sharing network, into the, uh, what we're going to talk about today, is 11,000 periodicals. Now, I don't anticipate or expect anyone to be able to read the, the text here. Um, I'm, I'm putting this forward just to know that there are more than, so that you will know, that there are more than 300 libraries that are currently borrowing materials from the Internet Archive from uh, the from all of those resource sharing pilots um, and uh, and partnerships uh, and networks that we're part of. So um, the, there are questions, sometimes we've gotten questions as we've gone through this, uh, of, well, who all are you working with? It's more than 300 libraries uh, and uh, and the number is growing all the time. So uh, uh, you're, you're in good company if you're uh, if you're borrowing from us now, like every uh, any other resource share uh, resource sharing uh, organization, you're going to find uh, these titles here. The things that are being requested, it matches what I'm sure you see come through uh, through your request feed. Um, these are materials, often uh, articles um, that people are requesting. Um, it's and it's amazing. I did this too when I was uh, you know working in in interlibrary loan. The the things that uh, that people request are pretty can be really fascinating. Now, the way that we do our fulfillment is is of interest. Um, the the Internet Archive we use Slack uh, internally. It's Slack has replaced uh, almost all of our um, internal communication. So, uh, for, uh, for instead of email, um, we use Slack and Google Meet and uh, other video uh, conferencing technologies, um, including Zoom. Um, but Slack is actually how we do workflow management for uh, responding to requests from inter, uh, for for interlibrary loan, and. Uh, I'm not going to show a, a, an example of that uh, in the uh, for the purpose of this conversation, but what I want you to know is that we have um, our fulfillment team is working around the world and in in many cases around the clock, um, depending on the on the time zone. So these are people who are in our um, um, scanning facilities or uh, work for the Internet Archive um, in all of the different locations where we uh, uh, where we have scanning operations. Um, and so that team is able to do very fast requests and, and quick turnaround. As Brewster mentioned, you know, Brewster is also taking um, some time and fulfilling request and those uh, those requests you can you can see this uh, posted online and elsewhere where people are you know getting their request uh, their their uh, fulfills uh, their fulfillment in you know 15 to, to 30 minutes uh, which is you know, again as someone who used to sit in front of the photocopier and photocopy machines and then mail them to people um, this feels like magic. People always want to know stats and numbers, and uh, uh, I love them as well. Uh, so the uh, this also probably will ring true to you um, the uh, in your operations. I'd be interested to know if it's different, um, but my guess is that it's not a whole lot different. So what we're seeing is requests 
um, primarily for the 1990s. That would make sense, right? You know, materials started going digital in the 2000s, but if you're looking at a, you know, a 20 to 30 year window for, for research, um, we're looking now back in the uh, 2000s and 90s, the material in the 1990s is not widely available um, via, uh, via electronic means. So people are requesting that through interlibrary loan uh, uh, for uh, the materials that they don't have necessarily in their library. So lots of requests made, uh, highest years requested in the 90s, and then four-fifths of our requests are now for articles and a fifth for book chapters, which is a change. It used to be more uh, two-thirds and one-third, and now we're getting, again, like your operations request coming in for, uh, for articles. The request for day, uh, it, it uh, tracks alongside the holiday breaks. Now, I mentioned that, the, you know, we started the our, uh, and have brought on different uh, partners um, over last year. So this, the, the, the graph that you're seeing here is sort of a year to date, uh, um, a, a couple months earlier than uh, maybe this is 14 months or, or so. Um, but you can see that there is the holiday slump. Um, you know, people being uh, being out, uh, the, the the general quietness that we can all fill on our campuses and in our libraries um, around the the last couple weeks of the year, the first week of the year, and then also that sort of summer plateau, um, the, uh, the the lower uh, the, you know, the things evening out over the summer. But um, like uh, like other organizations, we have our high points too. And so this was on um, October 25th. I think it may have been um, uh, eclipsed by, uh, by yesterday or, or uh, Monday, but on the 25th, uh, Brewster tweeted out um, that, that we had the best day ever for interlibrary loan from the Internet Archive. And so that was um, 449 fulfilled document request. 90% of those were from RAPID, 5% from IDS project, and 5% from WorldShare. Now, I'm coming to the end of my uh, prepared remarks here, um, and, and this is where I want to, uh, here's the opportunity that we have before us today. Um, what you're going to hear from Peter and others uh, for the remainder of the conversation is how to uh, how to make the Internet Archive, how to uh, start requesting materials from us if you aren't already. So what I'm hoping is uh, by the, the next time we come and uh, uh, talk with you, that that 5% from WorldShare is much higher. That's a number that we really want to, uh, uh, to, to see grow. And so with that, um, I will uh, uh, stop presenting here and uh, uh, turn it back to uh, maybe is it Peter, maybe is it Jenny, I'm not sure. It's Jenny starting us off. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thanks. So you might be wondering after hearing all that great information from Chris, how you too can request from the Internet Archive. So um, whether you're WorldShare ILL, Tapasa, or even Iliad, you should follow this workflow that I'm about to describe to all of you. Um, if, if for an Iliad library, this workflow would actually replace the use of the initial Iliad add-on to request for Internet Archive. Um, I think this way is probably better and a little bit more powerful, and it gives you as the library more control. So I'll start by just sharing some quotes that we received after the summer in an Internet Archive webinar that we did. Um, we had a lot of users express surprise that we are doing this integration and being really excited about it, wanting to try it out, trying it out immediately, and getting really great results. And in fact, the results have been absolutely amazing. Their turnaround time is among the fastest of any supplier on our entire network of over 10,000 libraries. I think that they're averaging around 37 minutes, so that's super great. So I want to make sure you all know how to order from them to get this great service for your own patrons. And the goal is to really do that by adding the Internet Archive to your custom holdings. So why are we having you make this change, go in and do this? Why aren't we just sending all of your requests to the Internet Archive whenever possible? Well, it's because that the World Share Island Network really gives you as libraries control over all of how you use our system. So our system is giving you a lot of tools that you can customize and configure how you use our network so that you can optimize your borrowing and lending networks, decide who you want to borrow from, who you want to lend to, under what conditions, how much you're willing to pay, who you want to request from first versus later. You can base all these decisions on your library's needs and preferences. So I'm going to show you one recommended workflow with a few different options that I think will get you using the Internet Archive 
quickly and making sure that they're always included in your lender string up near the very front of it, which I think is your goal. Because if there's a library that's supplying articles to you in 37 minutes, why not try them first every time if they have what you need? So the one important thing to know is that they have a symbol on our network. It's I-A-I-L-L, -L, and that's the symbol that you'll need to add to custom holdings. So your first step will be to create a new custom holdings group. Um, this workflow is talking about adding a custom holdings group with just one symbol in it, the Internet Archive, because that way you can make sure that your requests go to them first whenever possible if they have what you need. So here's a review of OCLC service configuration. And of course, you can get here directly from links in the staff interfaces of WorldShare ILL and Tapasa, or from the system ribbon in Iliad and your Iliad client. So specifically, you'll go to WorldShare ILL, and then we'll start with custom holdings groups. You want to create a new custom holdings group. You'll see your list of configured groups in alphabetical order in the dropdown. If you've never used custom holding groups before, this is a great time and a great reason to start. So you can create a new one by clicking that link that you see in that box on the right that says create new custom holdings group. So just click that hyperlink and then you'll need to name your new custom holdings group. We recommend naming it something that makes it obvious what it's used for and who's in it. In this case, you can just name it Internet Archive. You have to name it with no spaces in the title. Um, and then once you put the name in at the bottom of that screen, there is an add edit symbols button. So click that button. It pops up a window in the middle of the screen. And all you need to do there is type in I-A-I-L-L -L in all caps, and then click Update Symbols. And that will add them to the group. You'll see a screen like this where you'll see the symbol and you'll see that I-A-I-L-L -L is indeed the Internet Archive. Um, and then you'll click that Save as New button. And what that does is creates a brand new custom holdings group called Internet Archive that just has the I-A-I-L-L -L symbol in it. But that's not where you stop because, of course, if a lot of you probably already know this, when you're requesting, you need a custom holdings path. And a custom holdings path is made up of custom holdings groups in an order that you define. So, again, you get control over the network, who you're requesting from, and in what order. So, I'm assuming you all probably want to add IAILL first in your lender string. So, that would also mean you would put them first in your custom holdings path. So specifically, we're talking here about the custom holdings path that your library uses for requesting copies. Because the Internet Archive supplies copies on the World Share ILL network and not loans, they actually have a deflection in place that deflects all loan requests. So you'll make sure you're requesting what you need as a copy. So here I have an existing custom holdings path called copies, and I want to add the Internet Archive group that I just created to this path. You can also create a new path if you need to, um, but I'm assuming most of you probably already have a copies path that you use or articles, whatever you call it. Um, it's what you use to request copies and articles. So you'll see on the left-hand side, a list of all your library's configured custom holdings groups in alphabetical order, and I've highlighted Internet Archive. Highlight them and then click the Add button in the middle, and that will move that custom holdings group over to the right side with the selected groups. And then you'll see it, it'll get added to the bottom of the list, but this is very important because custom holdings paths may, are made up of custom holdings groups in an order that you define, you actually need to define the order. So you'll want to make Internet Archive first. If you make them last in this example, they would only get added to the lender string after all of your Elvis libraries and your more free lenders group that this library happens to have. So there is actually a little like a handle tool next to the names of all the custom holdings groups in the path. You just click that and drag it into position so you can put Internet Archive first. And once you've done that, then you can save this as a either a new custom holdings path or just save it as an update to an existing custom holdings path. So once you have that custom holdings path in place with Internet Archive first in the path, there are a couple things that you can do to create your lender strings. Of course, the absolute fastest way that we would recommend the most is to use automation through Automated Request Manager. So Tapasa, Iliad, WorldShare ILL libraries can all use this. This is specifically borrowing automation. And I won't step you through how to create one, but just to let you know this is here, and this is a good example of how to set one up to request copies and make sure you go to Internet Archive first. So I have an automation that I created called Send Copies. 
It matches on all requests that I get from my patrons for copy requests. And what it does is it sends that out to lenders if at least one lender from my custom holdings path called copies that you just saw me set up has the item. And then it will send them out, send it out to them and apply my constant data. And your constant data record, of course, is what lets you dictate um, how the article should be shipped to you electronically, how much you're willing to pay for it, and any other contact information associated with your library. And of course, the Internet Archive supplies to you as free. So if you have a max cost of zero, you can still feel confident in requesting from them. So you can set up an automation so that your requests, when they come in from your users, automatically go out to this particular custom holdings path with Internet Archive first. Um, if you use WorldShare ILL, you can manually send requests to automation in the staff interface that takes advantage of your automated request manager setup that you have here. Or if you're not quite ready for that, or if you have questions, or if you just want to try it out more manually first to see how it's working, you can also apply your custom holdings path in the staff interface of WorldShare ILL and Tapasa and Iliad as well. This screenshot just happens to be from WorldShare ILL. So what you want to do here is on a copy request, you can see this is a copy request for a periodical called Phi, De Phi Delta Kappen. And I have a request from my user and they happen to want a 1982 issue. So from this screen, what you need to do is select the custom holdings path called copies that you set up that has Internet Archive first in the path. Put in the year that your patron is requesting and then click the go button. And what that does is it filters all of the holding libraries down to just which holding libraries in your custom holdings path have access to 1982. And you'll see that Internet Archive, if you do it this way, will always be on top when they can supply it because they are the only library in your first custom holdings group in this path. In the middle of the screen, you can see that group column where it says Internet Archive. The group column corresponds with the name of the custom holdings group that each of these libraries are in. And because it respects the order that you created, if Internet Archive is the first group in your path, it will always be at the top. When you click Go, the lender string gets automatically populated with symbols starting in order of the first group and then randomizing the lenders in the second group and third group and so on that you might have. But that would ensure that Internet Archive always goes first. Well, this will work perfectly well um, when Internet Archive can supply to you, which they can about 80% of the time. But if you also want to make sure your other lenders are fast, automation is really the way to go because unlike building the lender string this way, when automation builds a lender string, it sorts the lenders in order of their turnaround time within each group. So you would be sure that after Internet Archive, you would have more fast lenders right away after them, increasing the chances that your request would be filled quickly and correctly. I think those are the main details that you need to know to use requesting on the World Trial Network and getting your request to Internet Archive. So I'm going to pass it over to Peter now to talk more about our network and some things that we're working on. All right, thank you, Jenny. And yeah, keep entering uh, questions in chat because we're doing well on time despite our initial um, technical challenges. And so we'll definitely have some time for discussion and answering any questions. So um, just a couple more quotes from the previous time we did that, did a session with Internet Archive. What we were hearing is Wow, this is great. I, and I love this this first quote. We geek out every time we get an order from them. It's really uh, amazing the work they do and the way that um, they've networked the, you know, Chris mentioned using Slack and there's a lot of uh, cool ways that they're evolving uh, interlibrary loan. And so it's just great to have them also participating on the WorldShare ILL network. So we really appreciate that. And I just wanted to take this just one step up. Jenny really went into the details of how you can configure this. And I just wanted to just talk a little bit more about WorldShare ILL and some, some tips that will speed up your delivery make your patrons even more excited about resource sharing because they get material quickly, predictably. And one of those things is automation. 
And the story I like to think about is just someone is researching on Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, and they submit a request for an article. If this is a request at Internet Archive, they'll probably have it in that that 30 minutes or an hour because they seem to work uh, many hour, more hours a day than a traditional library might staff their ILL operation. But even if you think about a standard library, um, the, the other libraries on the network that you're, you're requesting from, a lot of the workflow is you get in on Monday morning, you look at your requests, you start placing orders out on the network. If you have automation set up, those requests are going out to libraries unmediated. If we have the information about what the user is requesting, then you know a citation that comes in through open URL from a database, we have all the details, send that out to libraries. And if you've pr prioritized your libraries, they go to the suppliers you want to request from first. And then they're sitting in a library's queue Monday morning. They're filled immediately in the morning instead of waiting through till at least another day, maybe multiple days, if you are relying on them to be touched all throughout the process. So we really encourage you to think about automation. There's a little bit of setup, but we have a ton of documentation. And it's sort of like how Jenny just described custom holdings. Once you have your custom holdings in place and you have your automation profile set up, then you don't have to touch it. This is a one time, let's get it set up. And then it works for you and saves you uh, time going forward throughout the year. And then um, many of you have probably heard about the Express program. We have over a thousand libraries participating, but because we know no single library, um, whether it's a large academic, large public, uh, large special library, no single library has all the resources. And so uh, being part of the Express program gives you access to over a thousand libraries that are committed to fast turnaround time. And like this slide says, we've seen requests filled in two minutes or less. So uh, not every request will be turned around that quickly, but the average is 10 hours that we've seen through Express. And that's over hundreds of thousands of articles that have gone through to Express libraries that they're getting that fill rate. And it's really um, based on libraries committed to that turnaround time. We also have a number of, uh, I think over 600 of our Express libraries are part of Elvis, which is libraries that share to each other for free. So um, there's, it, there's uh, predictability there around your costs as well that you can get material supplied from those fast libraries. And this is all lining up under smart fulfillment. We're trying to make the, the WorldShare ILL network as seamless, as intelligent as possible to make sure the automations, the way you've profiled your library to work on the network, that it's predictable, seamless, and you have this kind of fast delivery that we've been talking about. Um, you know, and, and championed by the Internet Archive, but also by a number of the libraries on the network that are committed to that uh, turnaround time. And, you know, what's so great in my mind is how this scales out beyond just a core group of libraries, whether it's the core group of Elvis libraries or the uh, larger group um, in the US, you actually have libraries around the world. and these aren't just um, like when I talk to an academic library, a lot of times the academic librarians thinking about other academic libraries, or I talk to a public library and they're thinking about other public libraries that they engage with. The same for museums, state libraries. We often think about the libraries that are just like us because those are the ones that we have a lot in common. But the beauty of interlibrary loan is a lot of times this is finding things you don't own. And if you just are partnered with libraries just like you, they probably don't own it either. And what's so great about the WorldShare network is 
how it reaches out to all types of libraries, big and small. But sometimes what, what is just so fascinating is we have these, um, these small libraries that focus on like, like uh, space or um, other scientific programs or the environment, and they have documents, they have material that no one else is going to have available but you have access seamlessly through the network. And um, so I like to make sure that we don't just look at that close vision of maybe we get a lot of things from those partner libraries that are uh, very much like us, but it's that distributed network that makes it so powerful. And so just summing up, making sure, takeaway notes for today, IAILL, um, it's up to you, you know, but if you add them to your custom holdings and you can prioritize them, you're going to see that library come to the top. Somebody asked in chat about if I'm looking manually, will they appear in California? And that is correct because libraries are based on their uh, address, their headquarters, and Chris showed a nice picture there at the beginning. And so they are classified if you sort by location as California. And that's even more important for adding them to custom holdings because if you're not in California or close by, they might be further down a list of potential libraries, potential suppliers. Internet Archive is fast and they're providing to your library for free. So there's no charge for delivery. All their records have the their holdings down to the year and volume that what we call LHRs library holdings records so when you order from internet archive you can see i need like jenny showed 1982 i think on that one they own 1914 to uh, i don't remember what the end date was but it was in the 90s or 2000s so um you'll always know what they own what they can supply when you put them in a lender string it's delivered electronically, and I don't think we mentioned yet that they scan their documents with OCR. So this really helps your users if they need uh, the article read to them automatically through like an Adobe Reader or something. The OCR helps with that or searching text to look for a specific word. Super important. We hope to uh, eventually scale that more across the network in general for ILL. And yeah, simply add them to the, your lender string like uh, Chris talked about. We'd love to see those numbers going up. We think a lot of the reason we only have 5% on WorldShare is because libraries just haven't realized, oh, they're there, they're fast, they're free. I'm going to prioritize requesting from Internet Archive. So that's, um, now we can move to question and answer. Because I talked last, I haven't been following the questions as closely, but I think we are collating those in a document. Yes, Peter. Um, we had several questions along along the same vein. So was, does Internet Archive charge? What's the cost per article? What's the average cost? So if you want to take that uh, first. <laughs> zero, zero, zero. <laughs> No. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Chris, do you want to talk about the commitment to reciprocity? What the, you know, the value structure behind Internet Archive and why you uh, are lending? Sure, absolutely. And I'd welcome Brewster to, uh, to join and throw in as well. Um, and to the point that other questions in the chat of, well, why are we doing this? Because we're a library, we have materials that we want to make available. Our, you know, our mission is universal access to all knowledge. Um, we are passionate about access to information. We want to be uh, uh, part of the of the networks, part of the uh, part of the community. So um, this is just a logical thing for libraries to do uh, to be involved in in resource sharing activities. Uh, Brewster, anything you want to add? Yes, thank you. Uh, you. You basically got it. The Internet Archive digitizes books and these materials for the blind and dyslexic. So um, please integrate these into your um, uh, programs that are for the print disabled. 
Um, they have a much broader reach of the set of materials that are available, but that's why we digitize. Then once we've digitized these, we might as well do these great systems that allow us to do things really quickly. And it seems that it's really for things that are, you have to go back to your stacks to get. Um, so our, the, the, what's involved in the world share program, um, right now is just a, a set of materials that we've digitized that pretty much falls off at 2016. Um, but it, we've got a lot of the back stuff. Um, so, um, so hopefully that makes it so that, I don't know, you get fast access. Uh, and also if somebody requests it from you, you don't have to send somebody to the stack. So hopefully they send it to us instead. Um, so we've digitized these for the blind and dyslexic and it's just being a library. Um, what we are also interested in is more and more materials. So libraries are donating materials to us by the truckload. Um, and what we're interested in is everything we don't already have. So we have um, on queue, oh, many, many um, shipping containers full of periodicals, bound periodicals from libraries like yours um, that kind of have moved on and so uh we want the space back or something and then we digitize those as funding allows and right now funding is going well so um as these come online hopefully um uh, oclc will allow these things to be put uh into the world share system such that you can borrow from them but they will be available of uh, the blind and dyslexic and through other systems um uh, um as as quickly as they are available so yeah we're just a library So along those same lines, there was a question about copyright. Um, do the scans from Internet Archive include copyright notice, or is that something we need to add before we end up sending the request on to our patrons? No, we, we put a cover sheet uh, on it, and it's got a cool little cartoon. Um, but it also has sort of what, what, what your request was, what we thought the answer was. Also, if there's a link so that um, people can go and get it to it um, directly on online um, or borrow it, um, then that's uh, included in this cover letter. So at least under US, it's what we think is required. Um, and we know all the Contu stuff, we, we deal with all that. Okay, terrific. Um, someone's asking about the different symbols. I guess there's something, uh, they're asking the difference between the IN ARC symbol and the IAILL symbol. I don't know if you could address that. Let me take that, Peter. So um, there is an Iliad plugin that was built by Atlas that's free that accesses um, a broader range of materials than is available through WorldShare. That's the uh, InArc um, uh, symbol. Um, I, I guess, I think that's part of that. Um, I'm a little, it's a little opaque. I, I, we haven't been offered a, an, a, an opportunity to, to know how to set things up. And so actually I, I learned a lot through this seminar. Um, so yeah, we don't have it. So anyway, uh, there is this plugin that you can go and, uh, and then that direct requests from us um, and that's available to you as well. And it has the books and has a, it has a lot more material in it. Um, but it's not as integrated and I, it doesn't uh, go into the automation that I think is the real win of the world share system. Does that sound right, Peter? Can't hear you. Yeah, your, your audio is breaking up. I, I can probably cover some of this. Um, there's also a WorldCat knowledge base collection that has the, what the NARC symbol has in it um, that you can because it's all freely available. If you use the WorldCat knowledge base, you can add it to your holdings so that if you use WorldCat discovery, it's treated as held by you. So your patrons can find them and those links would go right to the internet archives holdings for those materials. So that's, those aren't available in the same way through interlibrary loan, but they are available if you make them available using the knowledge base. Am I back? Yes, Am I you any are. better? Oh, good. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have used the dongle to plug in my headphones. Um, yeah, Jenny, that's correct about the knowledge base and InArc is a symbol where Internet Archive for years has been uh, registering their book holdings for visibility in WorldCat. And somebody also asked in the chat about whether 
um, Internet Archive is and lending eBooks, not on WorldShare right now. You can discover the content and your users can discover content that um, Internet Archive puts up through the knowledge base and they have the free to read and free to lend collections. Those, if you activate those, they'll appear in your library collections and users can link from that record into the Internet Archive and access the material directly. So right now, as described today, their journal content, and correct me here if I'm wrong, but the journal content isn't accessible directly through the website full content. They are providing that through these resource sharing networks, including WorldShare. And so that is the point of, you know, sort of raising the awareness that ebook access through these various programs has been something that's been out there for a while. The uh, journal content is being provided just as your library does through an interlibrary loan request uh, profile between libraries. Thank you. Uh, one, there's been a couple questions around this, so maybe Jenny, this may be for you. Uh, folks are asking the copies that Internet Archive sends, are those sent through article exchange, through email, some other ways? They are sent via article exchange, so they are fully integrated. They drop their files just like you would as a lender. And then based on your preferences for how you receive electronic materials, that's how you receive them. So most World Trial and Apostle libraries are set up for article exchange. So you'll see the link right in the staff interface. If your Iliad library, they'll automatically be received by your Odyssey. You can set them up as a trusted sender in, in Iliad and as a proven sender in Tapasa so that those requests that are shipped electronically from Internet Archive go directly to your patrons without you even needing to mediate them, which gets them there even faster. Um, so yes, it is fully integrated with regular article requesting workflows. You don't have to do anything different or retrieve them any way differently. It's just like requesting from any other symbol, except it's a lot faster. Great, thank you. Um, a couple of questions from some folks that participate in our Express Digital Delivery Program. They're asking if Internet Archive is already in the Elvis Express Symbols list or the um, regular Express Symbols list. Yes, or we. We okay. did add Internet Archive symbol to both of those lists. And I think that's partially responsible for why they've been starting to get more requests because our, our express libraries use automation, they use custom holdings groups and paths well. Um, so they're getting those requests to Internet Archive because our system sorts the lenders by how fast they are and Internet Archive is the fastest. So if you use automation, you're getting your requests there. But they will appear in those, those lists. If you update your list, that we send out to you three times a year. Make sure you are updating your custom holdings group with those new members. Internet Archive is definitely in the latest one we sent out. Terrific. Um, Chris, this may be a question for you. I don't know if you're seeing that. It says, since it's from your microfilm collection, what is the scan quality like? Um, and is it the same as what we see from Rapid ILL articles that we receive? And are they OCR'd? Yeah, so it, uh, I'll answer and, and Brewster can uh, uh, give more context, but the answer is yes, this is the same content. It's from the same uh, from the same material. So the same quality um, that we're putting into other uh, resource sharing networks. Brewster, anything you want to add? No, and it's all OCR. Um, and so the PDFs you get, you can cut and paste from and somebody else asked about links that are in the cover on the cover sheet. Uh, those are, are links that can be helpful. You don't have to log in to use them unless you uh, you can get a couple pages of things that are available to borrow. But then beyond that, you have to log in to be able to borrow it. But um, but there, there's no login required to go and see these uh, these materials. And, and then PDF, of course, is not locked in any way. It's a normal PDF a la ILL has always been. Okay. Thanks, Chris and Brewster. Um, a question from some of the folks using Iliad. They're asking 
Is there an add on for Iliad? And also, where can we find instructions to incorporate um, Internet Archive in Iliad? I would say that before Internet Archive partnered with our World Trial L network, there was an add on, but now the recommended workflow, if you're using Iliad to request from Internet Archive, is to do exactly what we talked about today update a custom holdings group to include their symbol, make that first in your path, and send the request to them. You can see their holdings in Iliad because they've loaded their serial holdings with LHR's local holdings records. So you can see the exact range of their coverage in Iliad, PASA, or World Share ILL staff interfaces. And of course, automation sees those automatically. So if you use automation, it will only send it to them if they have what you need. And the one one of the reasons why we recommend that practice is because well, you can use the add on and I believe there is some additional content that hasn't been loaded into world cat yet to order from. Um, it does mean searching directly each time and then going directly the advantage and why we were so excited to get them on the world shared network is that. They can be first in the lender string and their fill rate is super high. So chances are they're going to fill it if it's, they say they have it. But in the chance that for whatever reason, which occasionally happens, they can't fill a request that goes to them. You have other lenders already in line. So you don't have to do as much manual work through by them being incorporated into the network. It all picks up and seamlessly goes out to other libraries if they they don't supply. So there's that. Um, it's just going to be easier workflow for you. But we're not discouraging you if someone wants to download the add on and and play around with it. Um, there are potential features and functionality there that goes beyond what the core network offers. There was a question I wanted to, uh, there was one about are multiple requests discouraged in order to spread the load? And Brewster's been telling me, send me as many requests as you can send me. And, uh, you know, beating the drum saying, I want to, I want to see how many we can get. And so, uh, unless he changes his tune here on this call, then bring it on. No, bring it on. Um, we do find uh, duplicates, like people are sending things through multiple networks at once um, for the same uh, article through different paths. And uh, it's kind of a pain to, to, uh, to basically fulfill multiple times, but as you're testing, feel free to try. Um, but in general, try to send one request only once. Um, uh, but, but yeah, send us lots of requests, please. Okay, I'm trying to see which questions we haven't gotten to. There, there was one more I had seen, Laura, about someone asked, where can we see or search the names of periodicals held by Internet Archive? And I just, there may be a way to do that through Internet Archive's website. I just wanted to explain that for the purposes of this webinar and for interlibrary loan, the assumption is you have a request from a user for a specific article that was published in a specific journal, volume, issue, date, page numbers. You're going to send that if Internet Archive owns that issue, you send it through the WorldShare ILL network. So WorldShare ILL is not a place to go and see a list of holding like a of broad the thousands of journal titles that they own. Um, but I don't know, Brewster, if you want to point out any features of your website or other ways people can access content. Yeah, I, I, I posted a link to um, the list that's in the in the set of materials that are at least we've tried to get into the World Share Network. Some of these things didn't make it because of ISSN issues and stuff like that. But this is the collection that that uh, OCLC has approved to be in World Share. Um, there's other other collections of newspapers and magazines and things like that that you'll find on archive.org. Um, and 
for those sorts of things, if you if you're you know using WorldShare, you can just send an email to ill.archive.org. Um, you know, if it's a library, we will respond. Um, uh, and if it's actually a patron, we will respond. And in, anyway, as as normal libraries uh, normal li libraries do. But th that's the set that's in uh, WorldShare at the uh, moment. Um, just trying to fit in as many questions as we can before we get to the end. Um, there is one patron. Our patrons feel intimidated when we provide a link to the content on Internet Archive because they see a login page. Um, I just wanted to to mention that that content you're referring to is when you add their collections through the knowledge base for ebook content then it does take the user to Internet Archive to use the content. What we're talking about today is requesting articles through resource sharing. They're going to come in through article exchange. They're going to be delivered. Your user, besides the nice cover page with the cool cartoon, otherwise your users will not have any idea where the article came from, um, meaning you know they won't know if it's the Internet Archives library or another library that you request from regularly. So we are reaching the top of the hour unless someone saw a question that's just burning. I wanted to pause and and I wanted to thank our guests and and if you have any final words, uh, Chris or Brewster. I'll go first and I'll throw it a Brewster uh, for the for the final word. So, uh, Peter, uh, Jenny, thank you so much for organizing this and thanks to everyone who uh, who turned out today. I want to make a, a pitch. We've, we've mentioned copyright a couple of times and tomorrow. We're actually hosting a book talk, um, a book called Walled Culture, written by Glenn Moody. Um, it's about digital rights in the 21st century. Uh, it's tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific. I've dropped the link in to register. It'd be a really fascinating conversation. I think you'd get a lot out of it um, and that would actually uh, bear into today's conversation. So um, thanks for your attention and, uh, and the questions. I hope to see you tomorrow, and I'll pass to Brewster for uh, some final thoughts. I, I just want to reiterate, we would like to be useful to you. So uh, block and tackle actually on the ground useful to you. So if we are not, if we're not fulfilling that, please let me know, Brewster at archive.org or send a note to ill at archive.org so of how we can improve. Um, let's let's get the library system um, we're to just shine in, in all of our patrons' eyes. Um, the idea of you know, dropping this down to sort of almost interactive speed, I think is, is what's expected out there. I think we can achieve that if we all work together. Uh, we've got the right structures. Um, so let us know how we can be helpful to you in a concrete way. All right, thank you so much, uh, Jenny, Brewster, Chris, and everyone for attending today. And um, yeah, reach out to us with questions. You'll get the recording so you can uh, listen to those steps Jenny had and get things set up. So IAILL is first in line. <laughs> Share the slides as well so you'll have all those visuals too. Oh, good. Thank you, OCLC, for all the help and support. All right. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks all.